One of the dangers of trying to integrate science and religion is what's often called the God of the gaps. And this really came up in the time of Newton and in the, in the Enlightenment. There are lots of things that Newton didn't quite get yet. And Newton said, ah, this is proof of God. I need God in order to explain these things. A hundred years later, Laplace comes along with better equations and said, guess what? I didn't need God for that. I guess I don't need God. Laplace was right. The God he didn't need is a God that doesn't exist. God is not the God of the gaps. God is not one force among other forces in the universe. God is what I'm searching for when I'm searching for truth. God is present in that joy that I feel when I plot up two variables in some experimental data and I suddenly see a pattern. God isn't the force that made it happen. God is the creator that made it possible. And God is also the creator who invites me to participate in this creation. Because in this creation, he's expressing his love. Science actually doesn't do proof. Mathematicians do proofs, but not scientists. Scientists know that their best descriptions are always going to be obsolete and always overthrown, and that we never have the final answer, and that the universe is always more complicated and more strange and wonderful than what we expected. I find that especially astronomers and physicists who are used to the universe being very strange are very open to the idea of a creator because what we observe in the universe is that it's more than we can understand. And the only way we can make sense out of it is to take the theory that is not just the one that fits the math, because I can find lots of theories that fit the math, but the one that's the most elegant, the one that speaks to something in my soul that cannot be quantified. Even the most arch-atheistic, mechanistic, the universe is nothing but a bunch of gears and levers kinds of scientists would be horrified at faking his data, at telling an untruth, at publishing things that they knew were not true on the theory that, well, nobody will ever catch me, because they worship at the altar of truth. And so, in a sense, they're worshiping the same God that I worship. We should be embracing them as brothers. We should not be condemning them, though we'll criticize their ideas, because that's what science does. We criticize each other's ideas. We keep each other honest. Pope Benedict himself has pointed out the important role of agnostics in our culture to keep us honest. One of the things we do in astronomy when we observe strange and marvelous things is we use filters. We look at, you know, look at a nebula in a red filter or an infrared filter or a green filter, and you get different information by sorting out everything else and just concentrating on one thing. Science is a filter. It's a really powerful filter because it allows us to see things we couldn't see without it. But the nature of a filter is to reject 99% of the stuff to concentrate on the 1%. You can't do that and forget the 99%. It's still there at the end of the day.